Hi guys, Jeff off the grid and well welcome back and today we've got a busy uh, busy one for you We're gonna go check on the shelter I've got some new tools that I made to showcase and test out might make a fire crane over the fire pit and uh, Just have a great day in the woods and also showcasing for you the book that first got me introduced to bushcraft stay tuned Hey guys, if you if you know me well and you have seen some of my uh, my videos, I, I really love making things uh, for me rather than than particularly buying them. So when I was at my Canadian bushcraft axemanship course, I was uh, kind of introduced to a new piece of gear, and I said I can make that, and uh, and I promptly did. What it was is uh, a MAGA token, and I'll provide some links to some references that I uh, that was inspirational to me, but. Uh, this was uh, a build that I just did the uh, the other night, and um, there is uh, some other YouTubers out there that have uh, also done a great job making their own. This is my version. I was going to make, it was one of those things where uh, I get started on a project and the, the camera's not running. So uh, you'll have to take my word <laughs> my word for it, but uh, let me explain how I, how I did this. First of all, we took a standard file, and you can see some some old, uh, perhaps there we go, some old file markings on there. And uh, I kneeled it in the fire. I was having a fire at my house, so I said, well, let's do two things at once. So I put it in the fire. Had it red hot, and then I let it cool cool to uh, to the touch. From there, it, was, uh, it took the hardness out of it, and I was able to uh, work with it. So I worked with the, the tang a bit and narrowed that out. I also profiled the uh, the bottom and turned, gave it this this hook. Now this is about three inches by one, and a nice gradient hook there, the same radius as perhaps a paddle handle or a shovel handle. So the first step is because it's curved, you have to sharpen it. So I was took it to the grinder and sharpened it. I also took the the, uh, the filing off the back, now the top I wasn't too concerned about. So you can see there the, uh, the edge, the bottom's polished smooth. And from there, then you can you can heat. And I was I was nervous about it, but I would use the, uh, the torch and heated the end of it and rolled it over uh, a piece of doweling I had in the shop to get that profile. From there, I had an old antler. Uh, in my shop and uh, I've used it for a few other uh, projects including flint napping tools and so on but this lent itself perfectly this pattern this shape because this is a draw tool you you wrap your hand around it and draw towards yourself now let's have a look at the curves here this antler started off wide at the base and then almost with a twist it became wider up here really see that so it lends itself well to lying in the hand and wrapping wrapping around forming that same shape of the inside of my hand now up toward my thumb it was a little little larger so this end worked really well this way now some people have their thumb up there I can still do that I can actually put my thumb right on the top if you like but this little spur off the side of the antler I think it was a, it's it, it would be a brow tine uh, on a larger deer but this uh, it only came out this far and this is how it was lends itself well for my thumb to grip on top and re really gives me good good leverage and good purchase I also took a moment to 
Put my logo on the end of it last night as well. So let's show you how it works. Okay, so the Monotogon is a kind of a, a native, I don't know its exact origin, but it's a draw tool to be used with one handed and drawn toward oneself. So, nice firm flat grip, thumb can be rested up, or in my case curved over this, this uh, antler tip, and your hand slides along the log. So without it, it is a motion like this, a drawing motion parallel to the surface that you're, you're carving. And at first you can start with thin, thin strokes, and this is great. This is a, an old dried branch, and as you become more and more comfortable, you can curve your wrist a little bit down to take out a deeper bite to take a boot to take a deeper layer off. But for right now, I'm almost using it like a plane coming across the edge of the wood and just I can change the angle so it's just beneath that bark layer. Now, if you wish to use this curvature you can do that sometimes you can turn it over and use it like that with a nice strong push stroke and that also works if you're wishing to carve a little notch it's just a little flick like this and quite easily you can create that notch, that divot, that rounded contour edge, and it's just that little flick. You turn it over, change direction, and do that much the much the same. It's great for making feather sticks, but this would be ideal for processing and carving paddles or various other sticks using those big back muscles and not getting your hand tired at all. You can see how quickly I'm processing this bark. This is dried bark. This is not a green, green branch. Got a monotogon. And as you get more and more familiar, you can increase your speed as you feel the wood being removed. So that's my Makatagan. Hopefully I've uh, inspired you to get out in your garage. It doesn't have to be antler. That curved angle does work well for the handle. And it's not necessarily ambidextrous. So you really want to design this with the with your, your strong dominant hand as the, uh, the primary um, hand for that. Much like any of your carving carving skills, you would use your dominant hand. I think uh, some people could work it differently, perhaps an overhand grip if you're tired, original underhand grip as it was designed, or turn it away and use it as a carving tool that way. The big idea is that the, the bottom is flat ground with the, the bevel on the one top edge. And that lends itself well to that 
that drawing action, that flicking action, carving those uh, those those shapes, and uh, either removing bark or removing wood uh, to create whatever you're trying to create. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Just wanted to share that piece with you today. Thanks for watching that. Seems like the moral of the story today is uh, show and tell, so we uh, might as well keep going with the theme and show you another build. <clears throat> I provided the link up top. Hopefully you've uh, tuned into that uh, prior video where it's the uh, Bushcraft Build-Off Challenge. Uh, I'm a couple of steps ahead of some of you, so you better catch up with your homemade bushcraft tools. So, <clears throat> so here is a previously used three-quarter open end, five-eighths, box end, forged wrench. And what you can see that I've done, and I'll provide the link to this up top, is I have taken that box stand wrench and really ground it down sharp on both sides to the size of a uh, almost a ring. What this is great for is this is a great kind of a draw knife gouge tool, and it works on the pull or push, and ideal for carving those spoons, bowls, kooks of cups, you can be working on the push stroke, different angle, cross grain, etc. It works well to drag and remove bark. So in this case, I mean, I don't know about you, but that makes a quick work of that. And uh, for feather sticks, okay. So that's another tool that I wanted to share. In a future video, I hope to show it in in actual action when I make a uh, perhaps a, a functional spoon uh, or uh, some kind of. A, a ladle if you will but uh, again quick and easy 20 minutes to workshop and again you can find a tool that has its place in the woods hey guys Jeff Allen thank you so much for joining me today we had a great day building the gantry suspension system over the fire we talked about the Richard Graves bushcraft book I hope you can find it to add to your library we talked about the uh, the option of making your own bushcraft tools Spoon gouge, maga talking, uh, didn't take much, only a little bit of inspiration and uh, a little bit of know-how around the common, some common tools in your garage. Other than that, we talked about uh, the uh, Tinder pouch is a, is a simple, quick build. You want to add that to your to your belt, and uh, it really serves its purpose to uh, carry anything from Tinder to Edible Wilds and have it right on your hip. We looked at those metal tins. If you can find a metal tin like that at the local uh, local thrift shop it really works well to pack food and quickly throw it on the fire without worrying about burning and uh, great way to reheat your lunch oh, it was a super busy day and, and I'm glad you came along don't forget to click like subscribe and share the bell notification thumbs up all those things send me comments and Q&A's if you have any and until next time it's Jeff Allen off the gridiron thanks for watching enjoy your outdoors bye for now